Well, f you've seen the title of this video. The poll that I put up won in an absolute landslide. I guess you guys like seeing me inflict pain upon myself because that's what I've gone and done. Oh my god, it's bad. <laughs> like, this is bad. Content warning right now before we get into things. You have no one else to blame but yourself. If you cannot handle it, click away. Please click away because there is some stuff here that I will never forget. There is some stuff here that will keep me up at night perhaps forever, <laughs> with complete sincerity, this is the worst video I have made. Like, I've made some videos in the past where it's like, that was f***ed up. From the get-go, everything's gone. Like, everything is f***ed up, so click away if you must. This is the kind of stuff to give you the heebie-jeebies, give you, you know, shiver down your spine, keep you up all night, and... That's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be discussing the do not research iceberg. So without further ado, this is the do not research iceberg explained. I mean, just how bad can it be? First up, we have one man, one jar. If you don't know what this is, one man, one jar is a video of a man who is able to place a glass jar up his butt. It's a very well known video, so I'm not really surprised that it's on the iceberg. Being up first, being on the top tier, it gets worse from here. It gets worse. A video of a man shoving a glass jar up his butt is number one. So that, that's what that is. <laughs> Little quick fire round already, because up next we have the unholy trinity of the internet. Lemon Parsi is an old man orgy. We've got Goatsy, which is a guy opening up his butt really wide. And Tub Girl is a picture of a woman in the bathtub fountaining herself with an orange liquid of sorts um they're pretty awful they are pretty awful there's no way i can show any visuals i can't show anything here really like there's there's no way <laughs> susan would have my ass here's something to gross you out ingrown toenails <laughs> that is up next um an ingrown toenail is when the nail of the toe kind of connects I guess with the skin around it and it makes removing it really really painful because when you're taking it off you're literally ripping your skin off at the same time. It looks grim as well which is why it's here. Things can kind of go awry. Uh, discoloration is very common you know it can go like pink, red, purple. It's really really gross and you know it happens it happens to a lot of people actually you know it's here it's on the iceberg there you go trypophobia i am not going to show any pictures in this because i have this fear so yeah everyone else with trypophobia you're fine essentially trypophobia is the fear or disgust of small and irregular holes in something and i don't know what it is about these holes but i simply can't stand them i it's disgusting to me my brain hates the pattern. I'm blurring these pictures here, but if you want to go look it up, be my guest. I'm not going to stay on this for another second. I, I can't stand. I, I hate it. I hate it. It's awful. <laughs> Here's a question. Are birds real? <laughs> I've never actually seen this conspiracy theory before, and I don't really know why it's here, but nevertheless, we're going to cover it today. Apparently, it's a conspiracy theory in which birds don't actually exist and they are government controlled drones. And so they're flying around with, I guess, the government controlling them, spying on everyone all the time. That is the conspiracy theory I found. Perhaps though this entry is trying to guess at more of a cogito ergo sum, I think therefore I am, can anything exist? You know, you can never tell for certain. You can only say that you exist because you are thinking. So who really knows if birds exist? They might, they might not. It just depends on your school of thought. Are you more of a conspiracy theorist? Are you more of a philosopher? Or do you actually think they do exist for certain? The abandoned crinkly bottom at theme park. I was wondering why this one was on the list because I'd never heard of it before. And then I looked it up. It should be here. <laughs> I've ran into Mr. Blobby before, but my word, have I met some people who are terrified of this guy. Like seriously, they are petrified of Mr. Blobby. Mix that in 
with an abandoned theme park and you have a recipe for a nightmare like seriously the abandoned theme park is uh, it's creepy it's there's just level of creepiness and just off-puttingness that the crinkly bottom theme park has and definitely tamer than a lot of the stuff we have later on but it's it's creepy and i'm sure there would be a lot of people especially if you are afraid of mr blobby that would be very afraid of this keep in mind this is still the top tier so it's only getting worse as we go along down a little deeper we have anything on reddit 5050 uh if you don't know reddit 5050 there is this subreddit up on the site where you go to it and every single picture is blurred so you can't really tell what it's meant to be and it has a 50 50 chance of being either a something really nice or b something absolutely horrifying <laughs> and this used to be really big on youtube back in the day kind of back in 2015 2016 2017 it's not so much anymore, but the subreddit still remains intact. It still remains on the internet and you can see some messed up stuff. It's definitely kind of, there's nothing in particular I can really say, but if you are interested in seeing gore and gross out stuff and just disgustingness, find yourself at home there because there is a lot of weird stuff. Definitely wouldn't say it's a 50-50. I'd say it's like a 60-40 or maybe a 70-30. Most of the time, you're going to see some messed up stuff there. So this next one I hadn't heard before and it is scary to say the least. So there is this fungus out there called Cordyceps. And if you're a fan of The Last of Us, you might kind of recognize the name. Cordyceps is what turned the clickers into clickers. What Cordyceps is in the real world, however, is this fungus and it like kind of latches onto small insects and it reproduces by zombifying the mind. And then it will use the insect as kind of a host and then it will sprout out from inside the insect like something out of an alien movie it doesn't actually infect humans but that's kind of uh, i guess where the last of us got the idea and it's a very good one it only really affects insects and a lot of these are going to be insects animals and creatures that zombify and lay their eggs in another and it's gross like it's gross 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 on the topic of this we're going to be talking about an iglaria fowleri i might have pronounced that right so i might have pronounced it wrong it is best known for being a brain eating amoeba it lives in warm waters and stuff like sewage kind of that kind of stuff it lives in lakes it lives in hot springs and if you are unfortunate enough to have it go inside you this thing will try to eat your brain whilst you're alive. There is a 95% fatality rate, so anyone that gets it has a 1 in 20 chance of surviving. If you get Niglaria Faleri, you are probably going to die. Fortunately, though, it's not that common. I believe it's 34 cases were reported in the 2010s within the USA. So what's that, three a year? Um, so not very common, but very deadly. So this is another one that is going to be in my nightmares tonight. Syriac is an animator that he does a lot of stuff on YouTube and stuff. He provides us with some surreal and bizarre artwork, but it is nightmare fuel, like seriously scary stuff. It's impressive, but he's able to utilize the scariest parts of life. I mean, I have no idea, but he's broken down videos and animation into this is creepy. Let's do it. Like he knows, he knows what's creepy and everything here is just, I, I can't put a word on it. It's surreal. It's out there. It uses every single thing to its advantage that it can. It's creepy. It's just straight up creep central Syriac. And he has a very large following. I think he's got like a couple million subscribers or something like 2 million subscribers. So there's definitely a niche for it. And he is just completely hit out of the park. I hate it. I will not be subscribing to him. I This stuff is too much for me. But if you're interested, check him out. I'll have a link to his channel in the description. I've expressed my deeply held hatred of So Young for a while now, right? I, I hate her content. And whilst this next entry isn't her specifically, it's along the same lines. Geoduck is a clam. And just like many seafood, the preferred way to eat this thing 
is to eat it alive. And many people have recorded themselves eating it alive and it's messed up. I've mentioned it even in the last video. If you're going to do something, kill it, then eat it. I understand that some things, for example, lobster has to be as fresh as possible because otherwise it is really dangerous. However, having said that, something like geoduck, I don't think is the same. I might be wrong. If I am, correct me in the comments, but people are like tapping it to get its juices out. They're eating it raw whilst it's alive. And that to me is inhumane. It's really inhumane to do that to another living being. Just kill it. Just knife, you know, kill it. The woman in this video is eating it. She's cutting it up with scissors. I might even be able to show this because according to YouTube, they don't care. They do not care if you are eating a live animal, if you're pouring barbecue sauce on squids and taking fish out of water, letting them flop around. They don't care. We're sticking under the ocean waves for our next entry. This is the hagfish, which is an aptly named sea creature. It's a fish that is just ugly. <laughs> It's been around for 300 million years and has no jaw, which means that it can kind of open its mouth to as long as it wants. Like it's huge. <laughs> it just completely minces its prey. It just minces it up with its extremely sharp teeth. And it's, yeah, it's pretty brutal. It's pretty brutal if you're a little fish. It's unchanged for 300 million years. It's one of the oldest species on our planet. And it is, I guess, very good at its job because it survived till now. It survived 300 million years. Having said that, not the prettiest thing in the world and not the kind of nicest thing in the world, especially if you're a small little sea creature. And yeah, that's the hagfish. What did Werner Heisenberg and Niels Bohr talk about in Copenhagen. So I need to try and simplify this as much as I can. There is so much to speak about in regards to these two, but from what I've interpreted, and I might have got this wrong, so again, please let me know in the comments if I did misinterpret anything. Long story short, Heisenberg and Boer were two of the most intelligent men during the war. They knew each other previously, and in 1941, the two met again in Copenhagen. You see, prior to this, Boer had been a mentor to Heisenberg. He influenced his work and studies. That was back in the 20s, and this was 1941. In 1941, the two were actually on opposing sides of the war, with Boer on the side of the Allies and Heisenberg working for the Axis. He wasn't a Nazi, mind you. He actually tried to hire a Jewish person to work at the University of Leipzig in the 1930s, but he was, in fact, a German nationalist. Boer, on the other hand, was probably the complete opposite. He actually helped German refugees trying to escape the country. Now, when they met in Copenhagen, this was worlds colliding because the two hadn't seen each other in some time because of the war. When they met, Heisenberg was appointed leader within the German nuclear program. Now, this was 1941, and let's be fair, in 1941, a betting man may have well put their money on the Axis reigning supreme. Europe had been nearly obliterated, and only the UK and Soviets stood in the way of a German victory. Heisenberg is reported to have said to Boer that they should join forces, as a Hitler victory was seemingly assured, but Boer was less inclined to believe this. From what I can imagine, and I really am no historian, I'm just reading this fantastic article about their meeting, which I will link in the description. You should definitely read it, because it's fantastic. But what happened next was one of the biggest games of mental chess the world has ever seen. Again, Heisenberg wasn't a Nazi, but he did want to see Germany win the war. Boer, on the other hand, now knowing that Heisenberg was the head of the nuclear weapons program, needed to make sure that he didn't reveal his hand, because he knew that the Allies were also planning a nuclear bomb, but he couldn't let on that he knew too much. This worked out extremely well in his favour though, because Heisenberg, in an attempt to prove that a nuclear bomb was feasible, gave over a drawing to Boer, which we'll get onto later. Their conversation is said to have ended on a sour note, with Boer getting angrier and angrier. And then, in 1943, when word had gotten to Boer that he was about to get arrested, the British smuggled Boer out of Denmark, after which he gave a drawing that Heisenberg had given him to the USA, which helped with their nuclear weapons program. Heisenberg had accidentally committed an act of treason. 
Heisenberg was later captured by the Allies at the end of the war, and apparently was supportive of the Allies using the atomic bomb. By this point, due to the Axis losing the war, less funding and attention was given to its nuclear weapons program, and it fell drastically behind. Some people think that Heisenberg eventually came to his senses and sabotaged the efforts, but others disagree. Even after the war, the student and mentor were never able to repair their relationship, disagreeing on the most basic of scientific fundamentals. Now, it's impossible to know what was said during this meeting, but to be honest, I'm impressed we know as much as we did, because this meeting was indicative of political ideologies and science clashing. I don't know, this kind of thing is just extremely fascinating to me, because these were just the greatest minds in the world having at it in a battle of science and intelligent and philosophy and politics. It must have been a very interesting debate. This next entry is the first thing that I can't actually talk about too much in depth because there's just so much to it, but it's the predictions of the future of the universe. And whilst it's impossible to really truly accurately guess what's going to happen, the world could end in a nuclear apocalypse tomorrow. However, there are some predictions, some theories, and I'm just going to go over a few of them right now for you. Just a few highlights we have is that in a thousand years, we will have a leap second. In 17,000 years, if I've interpreted this right, we will have what might be a civilization threatening super volcano eruption. So that's fun to look forward to. And in 50,000 years, again, if I've interpreted this all right, we might have another ice age. And that's if global warming doesn't get us first or a nuclear apocalypse or a meteor or, you know, another super disease. I mean, it could be anything. You know, it could be robots could wipe us out by then. It could be anything. So I'm going to link this article in the description for you to kind of peruse, see if you want to uh, find out anything about how the universe might work in a million years and a billion years, how insignificant our lives are. Yeah, you know, I'll link that in the description. So I hadn't heard of Aeromorphs. I don't think you have. I mean, you might have. How would I explain Aeromorphs? When a man and a human aeroplane love each other very much, um, they might get a bit of Rule 34 about them. Aeromorphs is essentially anthropomorphic, like planes and jets and rocket ships. I didn't see many helicopters though, um, a bit, bit weird. But, you know, people are attracted to planes, but not helicopters. There's something about, you know, those steamy engine jets that just get me revving. And that is the bare bones basic of Aeromorphs. Maybe you haven't, maybe I've just awoken something in you. So the next entry I want to talk about is how to seduce a turkey. And it's because turkeys, unlike kind of most animals, they actually have a mating ritual. Mine is to go out to the club, find the girl with the lowest looking standards, and then it's still get rejected from her. But turkeys have a bit of a dance that they play. It starts with the male who <sighs> buffs up his chest and he gets his neck kind of like that. And he will kind of dance and uh, kind of fan out his tail and he'll walk towards the female. Then he drags the tip of his wings across the ground in a tango-like fashion. And if the female is interested, she'll kind of circle around him and then... So it's a bit grim, but it's nature and it happens. I couldn't tell you why I'm not really an expert on this kind of stuff. I'm not really an expert on anything, but it does happen. Hyperdontia is gross. Um, it is a medical condition where you have too many teeth and your mouth doesn't... I guess it doesn't know where your gums are or something because you can have teeth coming like at the roof of your mouth. Don't look it up. It is something... It's very squeamish and I wish that I could erase it from my head, but I can't. I had too many teeth myself. I had four taken out. I couldn't imagine having about 30 taken out. My word would that be painful as well it's it's just awful it's another thing where like as with a lot of these diseases and disorders and syndromes they're very rare none of these are likely to happen to you unless you're a one in a million you just have to hope that you don't win that curse lottery though because 
all of the ones that I've had so far and all of the ones that I will have are just very, very painful and they do not look nice. We will move on to meconium next. And simply put, meconium is a newborn's first excretion. And for some reason, I don't know why, it is very, very sticky and kind of green. And it can happen within the mother or outside the mother. Um, and it's just different to kind of waste matter that most people will make. There's not really too much else to say. I guess everyone has done it in their life. Everyone's had meconium. And it's, yeah, really not something that you want to have to look at. Michael Stuns is the man with the world's heaviest member. <laughs> His dong is somewhere between seven and like nine, 10, 11 pounds. I'm not really too sure. Different kind of websites say different things. Some say it's half a stone. Some say it's four and a half kilograms. Some say it's seven, eight, nine, ten 10 pounds. It's also been enhanced. He wasn't born like that. He did it to himself and now he can't have sex. So that really sucks for him, but he's done it to himself. You know, you make your bed, you lie in it. And yeah, he is the man with the world's heaviest dong. Octolinkus is a bit weird. Apparently it became popular in Japan in 2013, even though this is only a rumor. I don't know if it has ever been confirmed, but Basically, what Octolinkus is, is the attraction to licking eyeballs. Now, there's something to be said here because the eyeball is... There's something about it that makes everyone squeamish. I know that the animator I spoke about a little while ago, he loves to kind of play with the eyeball. And it's... There's something about it that's just off-putting. Um... It's gross, Octolinkus. If you're attracted to licking eyeballs, I hope you know that I think it's gross. <laughs> Again, it's unclear if the reports were true. It could have just been some sort of propaganda. It could have just been some sort of hoax, but it could have happened. So I don't know if it's still around today. Could it be, could it be a thing? Don't know. If you don't know who Patricia Pashini is, you've definitely seen some of her artwork because it is kind of everywhere. It's all over the internet. Her art is extremely surreal and she loves visualizing dystopias and stuff. It's weird, it's wacky, it's wonderful, it's everywhere. I mean, I think it's like, uh, this is what gamers will look like in 20 years time or something. Some people definitely won't like it based upon how offbeat it is. But for me, I think it actually looks really cool. Again, though, it does look weird. So some people aren't gonna like it. Some people are gonna wish they hadn't seen it, but uh, I think it's very cool. The Roblox R GIF is one that I actually don't have much of a clue what it's guessing at. And there's a few of these throughout the iceberg and I'll let you know when they are, but I don't actually know what the Roblox R GIF is. I've tried to look it up but there's so many Roblox GIFs and they could all be cursed. So if you know what the Roblox R GIF is, please let me know down in the comments because I'd be interested to find out. Salted frog's legs. This one is not for the squeamish. Um, so when it comes to animals and stuff, Soul reacts with a few of them very weirdly. I think that snails, for example, and slugs, I think it's like kind of a well-known fact that they fizz up and they die when they come into contact with salt. Frog's legs though, if you take uncooked frog's legs um, and you salt them, they start twitching and they start moving around again. There's some sort of chemical component that reacts with them and it causes muscle spasms. It's really gross. I'd be interested to know how many of the French knew about this already. There's, oh, it, it's just, you know, it's a bit cringe. It's a bit it's a bit cringe. Like, it shouldn't be happening. The thing is dead, but its body is still moving. Cringe is the only thing I can use to describe this phenomena. Sassen devouring his son is a lovely little piece of art painted by Francisco Goya back in the 19th century. And as the title suggests, this is a picture of a man devouring his son. He's kind of like got his head off and he's uh, he's about to eat the rest of him. The man in question is actually the Greek myth of Cronus. And the story of him is that he feared being overthrown by his offspring and so he ate them. 
each one upon their birth, he would devour them. It's one of the most famous paintings of all time. It's extremely dark and the concept itself of eating your own offspring is incredibly messed up. So there is a reason why this is on this list. I think it looks really good though. I love it. It's one of my favorite paintings. And yeah, and that is Saturn devouring his son. The sea cucumber doesn't look good to be honest. That's why it's here. It's kind of off-putting, it's grim. To be honest, it looks like a turd. <laughs> like it looks like a turd. I can't be the only one to think like that. None of them look good. These are some of the ugliest sea creatures are ugly. There's so many on this list that are just sea creatures being ugly. <laughs> and uh, that's literally all they are. It's just, you are ugly, get on the list. Sea cucumbers are one of them, they're ugly. <laughs> Snails have microscopic teeth. That is a fact. They actually have 25,000 on their tongue and they don't work as teeth in the traditional sense. I don't really know how snail teeth work, but they're not like us where we bite down onto stuff. They're actually part of the tongue. It's cursed. You know, that, that's all it is. Shoki Shimbutsu, again, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, is perhaps the weirdest thing on the list so far. So back in the day, there were a bunch of monks who thought it would be a good idea to mummify themselves alive. Why? I could not tell you, but they mummified themselves alive. And I don't understand it in the slightest bit, but it's a form of suicide, I guess. And monks did it back in the day. Oh god, okay. Um, the tongue eating louse is another parasite that we're going to be talking about today, and it's bad. Like, this is a bad one. And what this thing does is it finds fish out in the sea and it will swim, I guess, inside its mouth. And this is crazy, but it's true. And it will sever the fish's tongue and then attach itself inside the mouth, becoming its new tongue. There is no going back after this. Again, it's not too late to click off this video. What the f***? <laughs> it becomes the fish's new tongue. That's its purpose in life, is to become a fish's tongue after it severs it. Unbirthing is up next. And I don't think I need to explain this one. It is very self-explanatory in the name. Unbirthing. On to the next one. <laughs> this is the first time in an iceberg I'm going to heed the warning. I'm not going to look this up. I can assume what unbirthing is. <laughs> Whilst we're on the topic of childbirth though, I actually want to go into something. The invention of the chainsaw is up next on our list. And I actually knew this one prior, but did you know that the chainsaw was actually invented for purposes of childbirth? It wasn't the same chainsaw as we see today, but nevertheless, it was a chainsaw and it's what will become a chainsaw. So that's fun. <laughs> um, I would assume it was extremely painful. I would assume just like many things in history, it didn't help and actually made things worse. <laughs> and yeah, not really something that you want in the delivery room when you are trying to give birth a chainsaw. Not really. The Africa shoebox appeal advert from the 90s is depressing and it's sad. It is just a very gritty and dark take on the problems facing Rwanda in the mid 90s. The shoebox appeal wanted to make an advert saying that like, we know you don't want to give money, but at the same time, people are dying here. And it is extremely dark, it's extremely gritty, and it's extremely messed up. I couldn't imagine seeing it on TV, it's like, especially for an advert, it's just so depressing and bleak but that's what it is. The bobbit worm is another animal that I just wish I didn't know about. It is a worm that kind of hangs out at the bottom of the sea and it's, it's just another ugly one. The only difference is though, this one is a predator for small little kind of critters that are walking around the seabed. And whilst it looks very small, it can actually grow to be about nine foot. I've spoken about giant worms before in my cryptid video and my mysterious creatures video. This one actually exists. The bobbit worm is nine foot tall, or at least it can grow up to nine foot. And that is incredible, but this thing's ugly. It doesn't need to be nine foot. <laughs> this one's actually quite interesting. We've spoken about birth before, and I guess it's kind of like a, it's a disgusting part of life, isn't it? So a breech birth, if you don't know, is a birth in which a baby comes out 
bottom first. They're meant to come out head first, but three to 5% of the time, it will come out bottom first. And this can lead to some complications. The fatality rate of breech births is actually about double that of cephalic births, which is head first. And I mean, it, it's not very much, but it still happens. And it happens about three to 5% of the time, as I said before. So it's interesting. Um, don't look up any videos of it though, you know, <laughs> don't research it. Don't get that far down into the rabbit hole. The Chinese hourglass spider is yet another one where maybe I'm just used to looking at spiders at this point because, you know, I do iceberg charts all the time, but I don't really get what's too scary about it or what's so disturbing. It has this Oreo thing on its back, which is a bit weird. And it's actually one of the rarest spiders known to man. I don't know. I haven't been able to find if this thing is actually natural. Like if the stamp looking thing on its back is nature or was that manufactured by man nevertheless it looks weird and it's got a weird oreo on its back so the crucified chicken if i got this right was an art piece created by deborah sengi back in 2013 and when it comes to crucifixion it is a very very dicey subject because first of all you got religious connotations obviously crucifixion and christianity go hand in hand that's a symbol is the crucifix however crucifixion in and of itself is kind of messed up. It's nailing someone's hands and feet to a cross. One of the most sadistic forms of torture known to man. Add a chicken into the mix and you've got a recipe for something that shouldn't really be looked into too much because it's just a bit gross, a bit disturbing. Definitely disturbing for a few, especially if you are kind of big into your religion and big into Christianity. Some people do take offense to it and it just looks all kinds of wrong. Delphine LaLaurie was an American serial killer who back in the 1800s was known for killing 62 of her slaves. She brutally tortured and murdered 62 people. She was played by Kathy Bates in season three of American Horror Story. And she is also known as one of the most despicable serial killers of all time. There was once also a story of a young girl who was a slave of hers who decided to jump off a roof instead of be the victim of yet another heartless thrashing. Lilori was eventually found out for her crimes and she was chased out of the country with an angry mob going through her house and destroying everything. They just destroyed the place. So she fled to France where she died in 1849 at the age of 62. One of the most despicable human beings ever. HP Lovecraft's cat. So I actually had a comment a little while ago on my videos talking about separating the art from the artist and something they brought up was HP Lovecraft. If you don't know HP Lovecraft, he invented Cthulhu basically. He he wrote a lot of the you know greatest works of novels of all time, Mountains of Madness, The Shadow Out of Time. He's made some of the most famous and iconic works of all time. However, he is an extremely problematic and polarizing person. And he named his cat the N-Word Man. Not the best name, in my opinion, the N-Word Man. Uh, like, not the actual N-Word Man, but, you know. Uh, and his views on race and politics were extremely polarizing. And so that's that's definitely an example people have used in the past of, you know, can can we... He's, he's one of the great authors, but... He lived a problematic life and there's a couple others as well that, that have done very similar things, if not worse, further down. So keep on watching for that. Leafy's butthole. <laughs> Obvious reasons, I can't show it, but Leafy's nudes leaked and I've been subjected to some shit in my time. And that was the worst. These things I cannot erase from my memory. I hope you know that. Don't research it. Do not research. <laughs> Parasitic Twins has beaten me. This actually might be the worst thing on the iceberg. So once again, warning, but a parasitic twin is, I believe from my understanding, is Siamese twins where one has died and it's become a kind of, it's just become a dead corpse that's attached to the living twin like it could have stopped growing it could have stopped whatever but it's kind of when you have siamese twins and one of them is a miscarriage 
it will stop developing absolutely abhorrent. Uh, and I'm not going to spend another second thinking about it or explaining it. It's one of the worst things I have seen. I'll be honest, I was worried when I saw scallop eyes on the iceberg. We spoke a little bit earlier, like the eye is, is a very kind of, uh, you know, it, it's very squeamish. I, I get very squeamish at eyes. And I, I was worried. I, I thought this would be a disease of the eyes. Luckily for me, it's actually just describing a scallop's eyes, and they actually have 200 of them, and they all work, I guess, together for the scallop to see. Very ugly animal. I didn't actually know what it was. Like I've seen Hell's Kitchen a lot, and he, he's always making scallops and stuff. They are very, very ugly. <laughs> They're a lot uglier than I thought they would be. So yeah, that's just scallop eyes. I'm sure I can show a picture of that. Uh, in this video. We're going to move on to a very particular form of torture. And this form of torture is one of the more sickening that I've heard. It's called scaphism. And what scaphism is, is you take someone, you put them, like, I, I think it's said between two boats, but you put them in a boat and you cover them in milk and honey. What people then used to do was they kept on feeding these people milk and honey so they would stay alive but the milk would turn bad and the honey would attract insects. And so these people over days, weeks, or maybe even like a month are slowly eaten to death by flies and, and pests and vermin. The fact that someone conjured this up is completely revolting. Sonic's feet. We have another really cruel one up next. Violence and abuse against animals is one of the things that hurts me the most. And the Turns Pit dog is such a black mark on humans' treatment of dogs. Their love for humans is unconditional. And back in the Middle Ages, humans bred some dogs to run in a hamster wheel, basically to kind of get things cranking and get things turning and this dog literally all day would just run around in a hamster well, that was its existence it was trapped in there and that's what it did queen victoria actually was known for adopting retired turnspit dogs the fact that she didn't kind of make it illegal to own them was but they were actually dying out at the time because of the industrial revolution which began in the Victorian era. And so no longer did you need manual people or dogs to turn cranks. Now you had automated kind of things going on. And so the Turnspit dog died out in, I think it was like 1900 or something. I mean, obviously these days they would be treated really, really well and they have such a rich history, but they're now extinct. The anglerfish mating ritual, it's another fish and mating rituals are always a bit, oh, you know, we had the turkey one earlier. The anglerfish mating ritual, however, takes the cake for being the most, <laughs> whoa, God. <laughs> Essentially what happens is boy meets girl, boy bites girl, boy and girl fuse. And for the rest of his life, the male drinks the female's blood and that's where it gets its nutrients and they become one. Almost like some sort of weird uh, slow poke or something from Pokemon. <laughs> he is then constantly kind of refilling her with sperm and that is the existence of the anglerfish, which is already one of the most like ugly fish of all time. To know that about it as well is gross. It is a gross, nauseating kind of... Oh, God. We have dug too deep, man. We've dug too deep. I don't even know if I'm allowed to show a lot of these. Like, does YouTube have guidelines against gross stuff? I don't know. But Black Hairy Tongue is up next, and it's where you get a tongue that goes black, um, and it looks hairy. And the way to prevent this is to brush your teeth. So make sure you brush your teeth and you won't get black hairy dung. And you brush your tongue as well. It's two minutes in the morning, two minutes in the night, up, down, side, side, front, back. Get it all. 
and you won't get black hairy dung. Arachnophobes look away because camel spiders might not be for you. If you don't know what a camel spider is, imagine a spider and a scorpion made whippy. And <laughs> it is neither a spider nor scorpion, it's kind of a fusion of the both. It is venomous to small animals, it is lightning fast, and its fangs are absolutely huge. This guy right here, Coyote Peterson, let it bite him to prove that it's not harmful to humans, that if a camel spider bites you, that it won't kill you. And it won't because it only has enough venom to kill small animals, but regardless, it's got huge fangs, it's big, it's just scary as f so. <laughs> Constantine X King Shark. So I don't read any comics, so I couldn't give you like a full thing if these two have ever had a special romantic history. But people on the internet have decided to take it upon themselves to make not safe for work art of Constantine and King Shark. I've seen them doing all kinds of lewd acts. Keep in mind, one of them is a shark. So. <laughs> I don't have anything else to add, let's move on to the next one. As I've said many times in this video, humans are sometimes a cancer to the earth. And the electrocution of an elephant is definitely like a prime example of this. Um, if you don't know, the electrocution of an elephant is like a short, short film. It's like 70 seconds long. That was produced in 1903 by the Edison Manufacturing Company. This was owned by Thomas Edison, who I guess probably had some fingers in this pie in the electrocution of an elephant. I think Bob's Burgers did an episode on this as well, but long story short, Thomas Edison killed an elephant on camera. It was probably like the first recorded death of an elephant on camera. And it is disgusting. Elephants are one of the most beautiful creatures on earth. Like that, that was awful. That was an awful, awful thing. On to the next one anyway, we have eye freckles. They're a thing, you can have a freckle in your eye. A lot of the time it's kind of like a birthmark or something. Um, this one doesn't creep me out so much because I've been a long time fan of Aaron Marino and he has a birthmark in his eye. So I guess I'm kind of used to seeing it uh, a little bit at the time, but I guess if it's the first time seeing it, I definitely remember my first time. I was like, oh my God, that's a bit weird. Uh, and yeah, you can have a freckle in your eye. I got a freckle right underneath my left eye. Like it's on the lid, it's on my eyelid. But fortunately I don't have one in my eye because that is a bit more kind of, ugh. So we're back to animals again. This one is not so much of like, hey, you killed this. It is another one where a kind of parasite takes over a host and it is the emerald wasp. So if you don't know an emerald wasp, what it does, and, and this is, it, it's incredible that it does this, but holy shit, what it does is it paralyzes a cockroach. I think it's always cockroaches and it kind of uses its antennas, ratatouille style, to take it back to its nest. And then it'll inject the cockroach with its eggs and the eggs will hatch within and they will eat the cockroach inside out. Keep in mind, at no point did I say the cockroach was dead. The cockroach is paralyzed and it will be eaten from the inside out until it dies. So it, it has been injected with the eggs and it's only until they rip a vital organ or something that the cockroach will die. They're just paralyzed. Dear God, do not reincarnate me into a cockroach, please. It's such a shame as well though, because the emerald wasp is probably the best looking wasp I have seen. This thing looks majestic, but holy sh is it evil? So next up on the agenda, we have Mellification. And I like to think of this as a channel where you can both have a laugh and also learn things. And Mellification is one of these things that just sprinkle this into a conversation next time you're at a party. It was 1500s China, and there were a handful of Chinese men who had the idea to mellify themselves. And what mellifying yourself means is eating nothing but honey, drinking nothing but honey, breathing nothing but honey. You would bathe in honey. Your entire being would be honey until you're literally excreting honey. And then you would go optionally as well, you would go 
into a coffin that was filled in honey and get buried underground. I don't know why they're doing it. Of all ways to suicide, mellification sounds the worst. Obviously, you would then die. Some people died of just eating nothing but honey. It's not sustainable. And they would lower you into the ground. I don't entirely understand it, but my understanding is that about a century later, you would get taken up from underground and you would get sold to the local farmer's market and then people would eat you because they thought that it helped your health. Maybe there was some sort of spiritual way of like, because it was old men. It, it wasn't any young people and it was like, oh, maybe if I get eaten by them, I will, you know, my soul will be inside. But no, <laughs> I have no words for this one. I actually have no words. I have no understanding of why you would mellify yourself, but it happened. Infinity Stones on Tenor. I do appreciate that the creators of the iceberg, who I will name in a minute, I've got on my uh, script, have sprinkled in a few things for me to at least have a little laugh at. If you're over 18 and you dare, go on Tenor, which is like the gift sharing site, and search up Infinity Stones. I'm not going to give you any more than that. If you're over 18 and you wish to, go do it. All I'm going to say is that Thanos was sexualized a lot. And... I will never unsee this. We're really starting to get to the bottom of the iceberg here. We have Cruet's Felt Jacob's Disease, which is one of the scarier things that you might hear about. It's a condition that over about the course of a year will completely make your brain shut down. There's no way to avoid guessing it. It is caused by an infectious protein in the brain called prion. But if you guess it, you will die. There is no cure, it's not treatable, and over the course of the year, you'll lose your memories, you won't be able to speak, you won't be able to eat, you won't be able to, you won't be the same person you were. Like, your brain will shut down. It happens to about one in a million people, so this is, yet again, another lottery that you just don't want to win, and it's such a shame that it happens. Harlequin babies is something that there is no way I'm going to research into anything here. I've seen Harlequin babies. I'm lost for words with with just how how tragic it is. Please, please don't research it. It is one of the saddest things I've seen. Just little babies and stuff. It is it is appalling. I think when it comes to babies, there's just something else about it. But please do not look up Harlequin babies. They are one of the worst things I've seen on this iceberg. The heat death of the universe. FTZ, PLTC, Fergie and Walrus Walrus 61. You have outdone yourselves because not only do I have to be subjected to look at some of the most disgusting things I've ever seen, some of the most appalling stories of humankind, I also get to not sleep at night because I'm having an existential crisis. The heat death of the universe is the last thing that we think will ever happen in the universe. It's not going to happen for, I don't even know, like hundreds of billions, if not trillions of years. The heat death of the universe is the last thing to happen. It's just when everything dies, it's thought that the universe will evolve into a state of no thermodynamic free energy and therefore would be unable to sustain processes that increase entropy and everything dies. There is nothing else. There is no more anything. I don't know where we all go. Like, there's things in the world, right? Is there is there a floor to the universe? Would everything just fall on the floor? Like, I don't know. It makes you feel insignificant. And, you know, that everything and everyone is, you know, the entire world, the entire universe will one day come to an end. If there is something I'd like to kind of give you as a piece of moral support is that there is a theory that the heat death of the universe is also the Big Bang and everything that happens is going to happen again. And so you get to go round again and again, kind of Futurama style. I hope that's the case. Who knows? It, it, I mean, it could be anything could happen. We don't know enough about the mysteries of life to say for certain. So, you know, let's be optimistic about things. We have Osteo Odonto, Kera, Osteo, Dento, Kerathro, Austrio, Austrio, Keratoprothesis. I don't know how to say that. Um, it is known as tooth in the eye surgery. Apparently, from my understanding, 
people, some of them, are born with a tooth in their eye. The pictures are obscene. Based on the pictures, that's enough for me. It's known as tooth in the eye surgery, so I can only assume that some people are born with a tooth in their eye, maybe? And yeah. Gross. <laughs> Shiro Ishii and the 731 unit is an entire rabbit hole in and of itself. He was perhaps one of the worst human beings of all kind. Like he was directly responsible for the deaths of about 10,000 innocent civilians and also prisoners of war back in World War II. Um, what he was doing as well kind of scares me because if he was doing it back in the 1940s, who's to say that someone might not be doing it today? Long story short, he led the development and application of biological weapons at Unit 731. And the biggest thing of which was that he attacked two Chinese cities, the cities of Changbei and Ningbo, with the bubonic plague. And perhaps debatably, the worst thing of all is that whilst 10,000 people died at his hands, again, most of them, the vast majority of them, were prisoners of war and innocent civilians. He was never charged with any of his crimes, despite the fact that the US government actually captured him. They decided to let him go in exchange for knowledge on biological weapons. He never faced political justice. However, he did die in pain in 1959 at the age of 67 from laryngeal cancer. I, I don't know how to pronounce that word either. Laryngeal cancer is what did him in the end. And apparently he couldn't speak and stuff because his, I would assume it's your lungs or maybe your vocal cords, probably your vocal cords, right, were completely just gone uh, from the cancer. So I guess, I guess in the end he did kind of get some sort of retribution if, if that is your idea of retribution to dying in pain. Let's move on. The Xenomorph Wasp is similar to what we've talked about so far. It's another one where it's like injects, babies, come out, eat the thing. It was actually named after the Alien movies because what we see here is reminiscent of the Alien movies. There's nothing more to discuss here, I don't think. You know, same thing as the other Wasp, the Emerald Wasp. So let's just kind of move on because I can see the finish line in the distance. It's coming up. So let's get through these. Ape language studies. I'm not entirely sure why this one is so far down the iceberg, but it's such an interesting concept. I can't not talk about it. And basically there is a bunch of apes. There's uh, kind of Coco the gorilla, who is famous for being able to use sign language. And there's also this other monkey. It is Kanzi the baboon. Um, I don't know, is, is monkey like the species? Is it ape? I, I, I don't know. And Kanzi the baboon, basically is perhaps the best communicator of all time. Kanzi can understand people with kind of very simple sentences and Kanzi can actually communicate with two or three word sentences saying stuff like I tickle or chase bite. It's fascinating. They actually tested Kanzi as well and Kanzi is better at understanding some simple commands than a two-year-old baby. So the problem is that Kanzi is in captivity how intelligent is this bonobo? This is only one that has been trained to kind of like, it's been educated almost, I guess. How many kind of bonobos in the world can do this? Is it fair to put an animal that has so much intelligence behind bars? I guess maybe that's what this is trying to get at. That's at least what I've interpreted. And, you know, we look after our two-year-olds a two-year-old and a bonobo are not the same. So it's an interesting kind of question, at what level of intelligence do we deem it okay to have something in captivity versus freedom? I couldn't tell you. But actually, I would like to hear your ideas down in the comments. So if you got it this far, let me know how smart does something have to be to be allowed to be free? How, how smart would a dog have to be for us to stop walking them around on leashes? Let me know in the comments. The Atabrarian Rubicundus is another one where I don't know why it's so down on this iceberg. If someone does know, please let me know in the comments. But the Atabrarian Rubicundus is a slug and it's been named after David Attenborough, one of the greatest humans alive. And that's all this is. It's, it's a slug that's been named after him. That's all I've been able to find. If it has some sort of powers, let me know. 
because I I haven't been able to find anything. Everything's very obscure from here on out, and there are a few that I just don't know from here because they are just so obscure and also so gross. So <laughs> Cancrum Oris is another foul, nasty thing to get. It is a disease, it's an infection that kind of completely destroys the mouth. I believe it's also fatal as well. It's like got a 100% fatality rate. It affects children between the ages of one and 16, and it just destroys the soft tissues and bones uh, and, and the structure of your mouth. It's not something you want to get, and it looks horrendous. It looks so, so painful, and I feel so remorseful for each and every person that's ever had it because it, it's, it's a bad way. It's a bad way to go. It's a bad infection to get. Cyclopia is what you think it is. Um, apparently, some people are born without a, a second eye, and so they get one right in the middle. It's extremely rare, as, as you would probably assume. And yeah, they just have one single eye. Don't research it, because you can't go back. Ignorance is so, so bliss. And I've seen some stuff today that I will never <laughs> have erased from my mind. So yeah, please do not research Cyclopia for your own good. It's it's quite bad. I'm going to link a video describing Godel's incompleteness theorem in an easy to digest way in the description below. And you should definitely check it out. I wouldn't be able to explain it nearly as well as someone who has studied it and understood it completely but from my understanding Gödel's incompleteness theorem is that there are two possibilities of maths it's completely torn maths a new arsehole there are two possibilities within maths it is that a maths is wrong and we have it wrong or b that maths cannot be proven as right which is just as bad as the first basically if maths is wrong if maths is incomplete, from someone that's researched it for about 20 minutes, if maths is wrong, then every conclusion that we make is a wrong one because wrong maths has led us to this conclusion. However, even if our maths is right, we'll never know for sure because you would need something else to verify it. It's like if you have a ruler that is a centimeter off, everything that you've measured with that ruler is incorrect. Uh, and therefore you can't use it. It's unreliable, everything, just get it off the table. So that's fun. Maths might be wrong and this might lead us to all sorts of complications. And even if it is right, we will never know. How hot dogs are made. Oof. I will probably never have another hot dog in my life. They, I mean, it's like how the sausage gets made is a term for a reason. They're just churned out, it's processed to high heaven, and it looks absolutely awful. I mean, luckily for me, I've probably only ever had 50 hot dogs in my life, maybe 100, <laughs> which now that I'm thinking about it, <laughs> you never want to see how the sausage gets made. It's literally in the name. It's a saying for a reason. You know, if you want to eat hot dogs, I just recommend do not look at how they get made because once you kind of pull back that curtain, there's no closing it again. The Ant Hill Kids is another video that I'm going to link in the description. I'm going to link Wendigoons to it because he in like 26 minutes or something can explain it a lot better than I can in about 30 seconds because he has a fully in-depth video on it, whereas I'm just mentioning it in an iceberg video. But essentially, there was this guy, his name was like Roch Theriot or something, and he had a cult. He impregnated a ton of women. He had 26 children and he essentially kind of abused them physically, mentally, sexually. He got shivved a couple years back and he's dead now, but the conditions were just abhorrent. They were just some of the worst you could be subjected to. So that's just another taster for you. If you want to learn more about the Ant Hill Kids, I'm going to link Wendigoon's video in the description below. So check it out if you want to. FortniteBurger.net is next, and I don't know. What do you want me to say? It's Wreck-It Ralph, Rule 34. <laughs> I'm used to it. Next one is Calculus. Next century of the Iceberg is Calculus, because why not? Why not? 
So this next one's going to be a bit tough for me specifically to talk about. Um, and I'm not going to really go into any depth, but you might have seen it kind of flying around the internet. The space movie from 1992, and we have the dinosaur with 500 teeth. I'm not really going to say anything, and I don't want to get cancelled here. I'm just the messenger. I'm relaying information of what was on the iceberg. <laughs> um, that's it. Do your own research if you want to. Again, I am just the messenger. The July 29th, 1995 build of Super Mario 64 is, if I'm not mistaken, the Wario apparition in which someone sees like a ghost Wario head, decapitated head or something, and you can get a stroke from it. Um, I believe I've spoken about it before in a previous video. If not, I've spoken about some other apparition. It's a creepypasta. It's, I don't believe it's uh, real. It kind of did spawn though. It spawned the every blank is personalized, which is kind of cool. And uh, and that's it. If you can see actually, this this is Dreamy, like from, from the start to now. Oh, we're almost there though. Lego number 26047. People think it looks like Among Us. Yay. <laughs> we're at the depths anyway. We've got your own name which is okay with me. <laughs> we have the original design from Sonic, from the Sonic movie. This thing, of all of them, this gave me nightmares the most. People kicked up a stink about it. I'm sure you know the story. People kicked up a stink and they actually kind of got the animators to work overtime or something, the CG artists to work overtime for about six, seven, eight months and fired them all. <laughs> um, some people think it was a marketing ploy. Others think that it was actually just originally shit and in the end it worked out all right because it was just it was looking too realistic it's like we don't need this ultra realistic ugly ass sonic and finally it is the moment that you've all been waiting for what lies at the bottom of this iceberg this video has been an hour maybe i don't know it's actually taken me two hours to record this what could be down here? We've gone through diseases and parasites, animal cruelty, cults, not safe for work stuff, not safe for life stuff, tragedy. Every single black mark on humankind, our worst moments have been discussed. We've covered the existential, we've covered so much. And at the very bottom of the iceberg, we have the game. You lost it. If you know what it is, you lose. Good day, sir. Have some of that. I just sat here for two hours researching the worst stuff in the world. I have seen some shit. You lose the game and we're even. If you do not know what the game is, I beg you, please don't look it up. Okay, do not look the game up because you will never be the same. You will never, ever get to go back to right now. If you don't know what it is, please, please don't look it up. Us who know are being forced to walk around the earth knowing. And it is a torture that I will never be able to escape. With that said, we are done. After all of that, please consider subscribing. <laughs> please consider subscribing. Follow me on my Instagram and Twitter. Join my Discord. I've got the link down in the description. Support me on Patreon. This video is probably going to get demonetized, I would assume. I'm only a poor uni student and I have to eat. So, <laughs> you know, if you can, come support me there. It'd be awesome. You could get videos like this in advance. I mean, I've got a bunch of perks, so have a look at them. So please support me on Patreon. Thank you to my backers, Cage101101 and Chris M. You guys are mega legends. Speaking of shout outs, we have Futsalpuk, which is F Z P L T C. Fergie, probably not the singer, and <laughs> Walrus Walrus 61. Shout out to you guys for making 
perhaps the best iceberg I've seen. It definitely does what it says on the tin. You should not research this. So shout out to you guys. This video could not be possible without you. Thank you for taking the time uh, to make it. You really put me through the ringer today. And finally, please let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see me do next because I'm only 64 videos in and I'm already out of ideas. Thank you for watching.